Welcome back to Scale Workbench. Let's continue the build of a full-size speeder bike. Taking the original foam seat that I carved, I fiberglassed it in order to give it some rigidity and I also did something I'd not yet ever done with fiberglass. I refrained from filling the weave with filler and let the original fabric weave show through. It actually turned out looking really good. I used craft foam for the inset of the seat cushions, put a layer of epoxy over the whole thing, and then I spray painted the entire seat dark walnut, not black, as I'll be weathering the seat at a later point. The speeder bike has a huge amount of greeblies, and so I used Tinkercad, an online 3D drawing program, to design all of the various components of the speeder bike. I printed them in PLA plastic, and then hit them with a coat of primer, and then painted them with various coats of spray paint. I used a few ready-made items from the house, such as this tub of butter that served as a perfect rectangular piece for this front radar component. In order to create the paint chipping and weathered effect, I'm going to take a page from my model building efforts and lay down a coat of silver paint as the base. The key here is to let the silver dry completely and then work quickly on the next few steps. Here's a blast from the 1980s. Get out your can of Aquanet hairspray, aerosol type, and saturate a paper towel. Dab the paper towel randomly all over the silver paint and this will create a slight barrier between the silver and the body color. Once the hairspray dries, about five minutes, spray the top coat on immediately. With the base coat still wet, I painted a medium nutmeg brown with highlights of dark brown, bronze, olive, and a hint of black. I only used rattle cans for this job and left my airbrush in the house as it was way too humid to airbrush acrylics at this point. Now my favorite part begins, the weathering process. As you've guessed by now, in order to create the paint chipping effect, we'll be removing the top layer of paint we just sprayed in order to reveal the silver paint below. The key here is to let the brown paint set up just to where it's a bit tacky, but not fully cured, perhaps about 20 to 30 minutes after painting. I used a roll of clear packing tape and some heavy steel wool to help add texture. If you just lay the strip of tape down, you'll pull off a perfectly rectangular piece of paint Definitely not the look we're going for here. It helps to wad the tape up and then pull it backwards to put up some creases and crinkles in it. And you can impress the steel wool into the tape to create some interesting textures too. In this case, less is more and it's easy to have too much fun and overdo it, but don't worry. You can always reshoot more top coat, color, and peel again if you have to. Now here's a key step to the process. The silver paint is far too bright as it begins to show through. A very slight haze of misting some light brown and darker bronze over the silver. Take the edge off the reflectiveness and tone it down. Make it look a little bit more aged so that the weathering looks like it's accumulated over time. The foot pedals are cut from plywood with a PVC pole, a PVC center peg, and a toe frame from plastic drip line. I created the controls for the speeder bike by taking rough measurements and comparing them to studio photos. To keep people from breaking them off too easily, three and a half inch wood screws were drilled through them and then drilled into the control panel. Two part epoxy was applied for the Greeblies on top. The engine flaps are made the same way with, with a silver base paint with a hairspray weathering technique over the top. I stopped by the Goodwill and found a lady's purse that had leather shoulder straps with two identical buckles. I took a shot at seeing if it would work for the tie downs in the back. Some additional weathering with spray paint and voila, we have a bedroll ready to go.
So handlebar fabrication begins mainly from stock wood and masonite. Many of the Greeblies are found items like these knobs from office chairs and other fashion parts. I'm not sure why, but the handlebars are really intimidating as the actual bike had very complex curves built in. My handlebars are slightly simplified and once the paint is on, they start to look the part. I used a small PVC T-bracket bolted onto the bottom deck for the gun to simply slide into. The gun remains movable and pivotable at this point and was fashioned from a length of 3 quarter inch PVC with some 3D printed parts. After a quick wipe down with a tack cloth, I coated the bike in a matte enamel finish to lock in the paint and knock down the sheen. And that's how to rapidly build a speeder bike. It took about 10 weeks and just over $200 to build. This bike was eventually picked up by one of the Star Wars costuming garrisons, the 501st, and will be taken on tours to visit children's hospitals. I hope you enjoyed the build, and make sure to check out more of ScaleWorkbench.com.